So here I am at 303 Sydney Road, Brunswick, on the lookout for the old Bombay Rock. Former live music venue, the old Bombay Rock in Brunswick. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today it's all about the Bombay Rock venue at Brunswick in Victoria, a rock and roll venue that did begin in the late 70s when the Australian touring circuit was in full swing. The club did um, or was designed and promoted as a dedicated rock and roll club. It had two levels, a main room upstairs with a huge dance floor and a smaller room downstairs. Joseph Gaultieri, he's the man mostly responsible for the Bombay Rock. Um, he was managing Fat Daddy um, at one stage and working for Premier Artists Booking Agency. And it was late in 1977 when uh, he sort of started the whole thing with the Bombay Bicycle Club, which was previously run by Melbourne legend Brian Goldsmith. Thanks for coming on to my vlog. I wanted to reach out to you because I know that you were managing the Bombay Rock in Brunswick. Yep in the yeah. 70s, 80s. I just wanted to ask you, when did you open it and why? I was working as premier artist as an agent and I didn't like being stuck in the office. So that summer, I ran all the bands over the summer down at Lawn. I, I, I knew the Greeks at Bombay Rock and I knew they, they uh, well, it was called Copper Cabana and I knew they weren't doing really well. So I went out there and saw them and I said, you guys want to put rock and roll bands in here. They agreed and that's when it started. I talked to Joseph about his time there, uh, some highlights and yeah, he, he loves to have a chat. He talks about Blondie, he talks about Cold Chisel's album launch, uh, you know, various bands that played there, what his thoughts are on the, on the whole scene and, you know, why venues um, were closing. So was it successful straight away or did it take time to build up an audience? Uh, successful straight away. Oh, wow, that's awesome. And I also read that when Blondie toured in Australia, did she play at the Bombay Rock? Played at the Bombay Bicycle Club, which was in Burke Street, Melbourne, a guy called Brian Goldsmith. And another band that I know had their first album release at the Bombay Rock was Cold Chisel. That's right. They came down from Sydney and did that. Uh, first show there. Yeah, that's awesome. And apparently they played their entire album live there. They've actually uh, they've got a ticket on, on one of their... They've just released a live thing, Bombay Rock, I believe. Also, I know Australian Crawl in the song Beautiful People. I think they mentioned Bombay Rock in that song, one of the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, he, he chose them for Bombay Rock. <laughs> Bombay Rock Oh, how funny. And I also, um, I know that a lot of international bands played there. I read people like George Thorogood, you know, The Romantics, Bo Diddley, Humble Pie, UK Squeeze, XTC, yeah. all the Australian bands that played there, people like Skyhawks, The Angels, Dragon, yeah. Finch, Ted Mulry Gang, The Models, yeah. The Divinals. Did you have any, any favourites? I mean, I've been asked this question a million times. <laughs> I'm a live music person. I love like live music, right? I, I get off on the energy of live music. Yeah. Sound, I, I get off on that. They all had their, you know, what they did, they did really well. Like the ball. In respect to why a lot of venues closed down in, in the 80s, uh, I know in New South Wales there was a lot of pokies that took over a lot of real estate people were getting you know greedy with real estate in your opinion why did a lot of venues that were around why do you reckon a lot of them closed down in melbourne well they went to pokies 
it was easier. I mean, about that, the whole disappointing part about that is that the people in power at the time, without mentioning names, they were bringing acts in from overseas and they were making heaps of money, so they didn't care about their backyard. Yeah. And, uh, people running the hotels, put three people on, we run 24 hours a day, there's no cleaners, we don't have to clean the mess up and all that sort of stuff, you know what I mean? I do, actually, because I noticed that started to happen in New South Wales where you'd walk into an RSL club and once upon a time you'd have a, a band and, you know, 2,000 people in there and then it suddenly changed and you'd have a guitarist, no backing band and it, it was just different. The whole vibe was different. Uh, also, I forgot to ask, um, did ACDC actually play at Bombay Rock or was that cancelled? No, they actually played at uh, Lawn RSL for me and they played for me at uh, Preston Town Hall. Every time Bond came to Australia, he'd come to Bombay Rock and say hello. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So he'd have a drink there, would he? Yeah, I'd yeah, give him a, a decent drink card. Oh, fantastic. That's awesome. <laughs> and, Joe, how long did Bombay Rock stay open for? Did it close in 83? Was that the last time? It, it closed and then they tried to re, uh, give it another kick in the pants. And, and yeah. The whole thing about running a good music venue is you, you've got to know exactly what you're doing. You've got to keep the people comfortable, the fans happy, the sound great. Look, I guess the reason I'm doing this is that a lot of people, especially the, you know, the newer generations, they don't know. They have no idea about... They have no idea. No, they don't. And that's why my channel's been getting a lot of views because I've gone to a lot of Sydney venues. I've done the Punters Club in Melbourne. I did the um, the Crystal Ballroom. I did that one. Uh, that, that, that was great. Yeah. I'm gonna do um I'm gonna do that other one down at St Kilda, the Esplanade. I'm gonna do that too. The venue. And the venue, yeah. I ran that. Oh, you did. Oh, cool. I started that and ran that. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Oh, how cool! Tell me a bit about the venue. So, regarding the Bombay Rock venue, the big opening night was uh, Friday the tenth and Saturday the eleventh of March, nineteen seventy eight. Now, the bands that played there were Mother Goose, Mondo Rock, Last Chance Cafe, Stars, The Sports, and One Night Stand. Now, I do have an ad, and uh, it's in Ram Magazine, dated 1978. Um, so, yeah, look, within the, the first year of opening, every major Australian rock act of the day did appear at, um, at the Bombay Rock. Mondo Rock, Skyhooks, Kevin Borridge, The Angels, Cold Chisel... Jojo Zepp and the Falcons, Midnight Oil, Jim Key's band, Russell Morris, uh, the Little River Band, lots and lots of bands. Uh, so Joe actually um, also um, at one point staged a, a, an extravaganza called Suicide Records New Wave Nights. It was in 1978 and they had bands like Boys Next Door, Teenage Radio Stars, Jab, The Negatives. So there was like a big mixture of, of bands that did, you know, play there. Memories. So Sean Kelly of The Models recalls um, playing at the Bombay Rock with his band Teenage Radio Stars as well as The Models. He says it was always a really good gig, a huge room, and he does speak really highly of Joe. There is actually some information by Ian McFarlane. It was published in Rhythms magazine and uh, you can find it online. Third Stone Publishing, I think it's called, or Third Stone Press, where it talks a lot about the Bombay Rock venue. Uh, look, somebody mentioned a gig where they remember seeing Skyhooks guitarist Bob Spencer running along the length of the main bar at the, the venue as he played a lead break without dropping a note. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> uh, Australian Crawl, they actually eulogised the, um, the, the Bombay Rock venue in their song, Beautiful People where they talk about, you know, getting your Bombay rocks off. So that's a great song, great band, uh, Australian Crawl. Stars, uh, Mick Peeling, Andy Durant, Malistic, they recorded 1157. Mondo Rock recorded the live portion of their 1978 album Primal Park. 
at the Bombay Rock venue. Rose Tattoo, they issued the CD live in Brunswick 1982 there. It was recorded at Bombay Rock. Uh, Dave Warner, he recorded Free Kicks in 1978 at Bombay Rock. Uh, some other memories. Uh, somebody actually recalls seeing Owen Orford from Finch and John English singing the song Give Me Some Loving, I think 1979, and just has a really um, special and fabulous memory of that night. Cold Chisel's performance at Bombay Rock, that was in April um, and was broadcast on 3XY and 2SM in Sydney. Now, they actually released Volume 2 of the live tapes in 2014, and it's just absolutely brilliant. ACDC, they apparently were supposed to play at Bombay Rock, but it was advertised and cancelled, something to do with a visa not being uh, ready. I've got a fabulous photo of uh, Rock and Rob Riley at the Bombay Rock. It was in 1982, so yeah, some really cool pictures I found. The movie Death in Brunswick featuring Sam Neill um, and Zoe Caridis, that actually shows a lot of the, the in interior of uh, the Bombay Rock venue. There's a story of maybe uh, Jimmy Barnes where he stage dived and slid his head open during a performance, which I think, you know, stopped the whole show. There was blood everywhere. Uh, somebody witnessed the Divinals, Chrissy Amphlett pouring beer all over the crowd. Uh, other people have just memories of the rock stars there, the band room antics, lots of fun on upstairs and downstairs and, and some, you know, lots and lots of absolutely fantastic characters that went there. Ray Argyle's film, The Models, that apparently does include footage of the Bombay Rock. Um, wasn't able to find it, but I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Unreservedly recommended, Margaret. I just loved it. I think it's absolutely unreservedly a five out of five film. Five out of five for me too. I think it's a wonderful little film. <laughs> I know that it was destroyed in 1991 um, by fire, apparently, tragically. And in May 2018, there was a, an attempt to open it up again and there were bands there that played uh, bands like Australian Kingswood Factory, uh, Muscle Car, Murder Rats, Wolfpack. Although it didn't last long, um, I believe it closed in about 2019. It might have been just before COVID. So look, I do have some pictures of um, various, you know, advertisements in, in street press so, um, yeah, just really interesting ones like this Billy Thorpe one. Uh, that's advertising uh, in, in various places. This is 1983 Duke. So that's in that one. Also, I've got a really old one. I think it's 1979 Kevin Borich. And, yeah, that one is, what? yeah, March 1979 Ram. Fantastic. Um, so also there's another one from this particular Duke magazine, that one there, I think it's 83, and it advertises a, a huge roster of 18 consecutive nights and you can see a lot of um, lots and lots of bands that are just scheduled to play there. As well, I've, um, I've got this particular book called Cold Chisel, Wild Colonial Boys. It's like a, an almanac, and it, it does sort of um, have just like a timeline, and it's got some really, really cool photos. There's Mossy, really young. Uh, that's 1977. Uh, some fantastic photos. And it does mention uh, 1978, actually, when this album... Uh, their first album, they um, yeah they had their launch at the Bombay Rock Club uh, venue. Also, Ringside, Rod Willis's book, highly recommend it. It's got lots of um, lots of fantastic stories. Now, in regards to international bands, you've got so many that played there. There were bands like Doctor Feelgood, George Thorogood, The Dead Kennedys, uh, The Knack, Steppenwolf, Eric Burden, Graham Parker. The Boomtown Rats, XTC, UK Squeeze, Bo Diddley, Humble Pie, Ian Gillen from Deep Purple, uh, The Romantics, The Swingers. So, yeah, I, I, it was really uh, fantastic just to sort of um, see that lots and lots of international bands were able to, to have that little intimate sort of venue to, to play uh, during those periods. Uh, lots of Australian bands played there. There's too many to mention. I'll, I'll just put a poster of um, all the bands that played there. Some notable Skyhook, Stars, you know, Dragon, Cold Chisel, Midnight Oil, Kevin Borich, Jim Keys, Richard Clapton, uh, Mondo Rock, 
the sports, Swanee, Rose Tattoo, you know, Finch, the models, Boys Next Door, Max Merritt. Uh, yeah, look, you, you can kind of tell at the time it was just absolute um, packed uh, every every day of the week, you know, you could see bands there. And even In Excess, I think, played there, Paul Kelly, um, The Scientists, The Reels, The Sunny Boys. So just a, a fantastic period of, of Australian rock and roll where, yeah, just people were out and about and, and were interested in, in supporting um, live music. So, look, the Bombay Rock, I didn't go. I wasn't, um, I was too young, I think, and I, I, um, I lived in New South Wales, so... I do believe it's got a, a fantastic kind of, um, you know, reputation and, and people do speak fondly of, um, of the venue. So, yeah, if you've got any comments or uh, any stories that you'd like to sort of write in, my, in the comments, feel free. I'd love to hear from you. And, yeah, you know, whatever happened to it, well, it's not there anymore in, in, um, in sort of, you know, what it was. But I'm, I'm sure that, you know, walking inside that building, yeah, there'd be sort of lots of, um, you know, cool memories for a lot of people. So thanks for watching. If uh, you're interested in this kind of thing, I've got lots of other, um, you know, vlogs coming up. Be sure to subscribe. And uh, there's lots of uh, previous, you know, venues. If you're interested, just uh, scroll through my page and, yeah, just enjoy. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.